That's great. That's great. Um, as a filmmaker and a producer, chasing down VOD numbers can be very frustrating. For example, I produced a documentary called Waiting for Superman. I do not know what the VOD numbers are. Really? I place calls, and I get calls back eventually, but there's a delay. There's a big delay until I can find out. It's not three days. It's much longer. So I know John Sloss. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things that you've been an amazing advocate for is more transparency with VOD. And, and there's, a, there's a school of thought out there that says that the lack of transparency is deliberate because you can camouflage a failure and you can hide a success from you know, the filmmakers or people in the film. Um, what, what type of work are you doing uh, to, to try and convince others? Because I know you yourself publish results. Uh, you refer to me as an amazing advocate. I would refer to myself as a completely ineffectual advocate. Um, <clears throat> this is, uh, you know, where to begin. This is um, a, an age of tremendous opportunity brought on by technology and part of sort of realizing that opportunity in terms of windowing, in terms of this new flexibility is data, is understanding what works where and when. Um, <clears throat> the studios for, uh, and I know we're in the belly of the beast here, but the studios for many, many, many years, I think, have uh, trafficked in a culture of secrecy. I think it's a human instinct anyway, um, where they had data on every aspect of the performance of films, and they shared data amongst themselves. And I think they relied on this sort of uh, I, I don't know whether it was collective embarrassment, whether it was uh, notions of <laughs> privacy, uh, so that producers didn't share data and didn't um, put that data in their service in um, sort of leveling the playing field between them and the studios and negotiating back ends and things like that. Um, so uh, we decided at, at Film Buff and Synetic to, to sort of make a stab, one tiny little stab, uh, in the direction of, of logic and transparency, and we announced uh, last fall the, the creation of a new, uh, I guess, statistic, we, which we referred to as multi-screen gross. And it wasn't meant to blow open all the secrecy of the history of Hollywood, but it was meant to do something very simple, which was to create an apples-to-apples apples, uh, ability to compare box office in traditional releases to consumption in, in day and date releases, things that, uh, films that were released at home on the same weekend they were released in theaters. Um, and uh, since, as a person who sells films, distributors are constantly trying to persuade my clients and me that films uh, would benefit in certain cases from going out day to day, day and date, and I will say to them, well, give me the tools to persuade filmmakers that they can make more money if they go day and date by showing what these actual VOD numbers are. Um, we published them on one film, Escape from Tomorrow. We're determined to publish them on more films, and I, I suspect our friends at Radius may help us eventually with that. Um, but it's really as simple as that. It's, it's a retail. <laughs> at least now. Like, I like your commitment here on this. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, Jason's too clever for that. Too clever. Uh, yeah, and I, I also want to say, John, that you have been pushing platforms like Vimeo. We actually had a call uh, last week, and John was saying, "How can we improve transparency?" Um, so we have a dashboard. So when you have your films on Vimeo, you can actually see in real time exactly how they're performing, what territories are being sold, what price point it's being sold at, what your percentage of that gross is. And we, because of John's uh, passion and advocacy, we're working to refine those tools to get better, to Im improve the ability to communicate directly with uh, producers by email, because that's the other really important component. If you can actually reach out, your best consumer is somebody who's purchased something from you before. Uh, and, and, and so I think he's being modest when he says that he's, uh, he's uh, uh, ineffectual. He's definitely pushing hard. Uh, I mean, what a remarkably awesome tool that is. You know, leave aside the fact that Vimeo does a 90-10 split, you know, when other uh, transactional VOD providers are 70-30. Um, but that kind of data on a real-time basis is going to be the basis for all sorts of, you know, sort of heightened analysis and, and optimization going forward. If I may, first for on this point, uh, I know John loves talking about this. Yeah. I, I think that there are a couple of different questions at work here. As a producer, um, I don't know, I, well, I'm not going to speak about your particular distributor in that case, but at Radius, as a producer, 
we send you a weekly update as far as what's happening on VOD. When we have the information, we send it to you. So you'll know exactly what's happening in the VOD space. And that's the information that we compile via our, um, via Rentrack that we use. Mm -hmm. um, so I think a lot of what you get as a producer depends upon your distributor. How good of a distributor do you have who's willing to actually share that information, which they should be sharing on a regular basis? That's one. The second part of this is, is this information that is of interest to the public at, uh, at large? Does this go beyond the producer getting it? Does, does this go beyond the people that are in this room and on this lot? I don't know the answer can I, to that. Can I respond to that? I mean, I, it's a good question. I don't think it's a question at all with regard to at least the simple statistic that I was seeking because box office gross is now a retail discussion. I right. mean, 20 years ago, nobody gave a shit. Now it's like, you know, but, but, but people, people cutting your lawn are talking and, to you and, about and what gross what on Monday morning, <laughs> and, is, and, and, and that's crazy. not pejorative against the people cutting the lawn. And, and I'm not disagreeing with you, John, and I'm not disagreeing with you that saying that this is not a, a good idea. However, it's crazy to me that, peop, that the, the box office, the weekend box office is, re, is reported by CBS News in that little clip during 60 Minutes on Sunday nights. Like, that's, yeah. like, why, does, why do my parents in Michigan, why do they care how much money you know, Tom Cruise's movie is making this weekend? There's just and not a, much else to do in Michigan. I guess not. <laughs> but as a, yeah, he's we're from, both, we're he's both from, from Michigan. Michigan too. <laughs> we but, can say that. And, and, I, and I guess I, I, I put the question to the filmmakers in the room, do you care as much about the amount of money that's made or the number of people that have seen your movie? Because I always wonder why we never embraced here the same thing that what they embraced, let's say, in, in parts of Europe, where it's admissions. Don't you care mostly? Because the fact of the matter is, is that it, in Michigan, it costs $8 to go see a movie. In New York, it costs 14 So, you know, those numbers, unless you have some context for how those numbers all add up, I feel like this is a long-winded way of saying that the idea that John is talking about and something that we also are very interested in doing I think what needs to happen is put some of this in the proper context in order to make it usable and understandable for people. So, Can I interject for one second? Um, it's also, I mean, the devil's in the details, too, because a film could be released in, you know, 10-plus markets on opening weekend, but it might not be a full-week run. It could yes. be a split run. It could be a one-night <laughs> event. And that affects your per-screen average. And for the general population, they don't necessarily understand that. So you could have a film that's, you know, kicking ass, to be honest, in three or four markets, but has fallen really flat in two others, and it completely affects that per screen. Here, I mean, everything that is being said here is accurate and correct, but it, it's very easy to overwhelm people by getting into the distinctions of, of that kind of minutia. Uh, I do think people will benefit from, from a sort of 30,000-foot comparison between day and date and theatrical. And while what both of you say is right, I d it doesn't blunt the need and notion and benefit of, of now making public, I think, what VOD is and what, and what it's trending toward becoming. My last point on this, and this, I just, because I thought about it last night when I was stuck at JFK Airport at midnight, and um, <laughs> I was thinking about how at Dodger Stadium, or Yankee Stadium, or any place, any place else, they always report what the actual attendance numbers are. They never report what the gate was. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't, maybe that's completely irrelevant, but it came to, <laughs> it came to yeah. mind when I was like, angry and exhausted and upset at if we Delta switch, If we switch multi-screen gross to consumers rather than, than actual gross, will you, uh, will you uh, report it? I'm not saying that we won't report the gross. I, do, I just think that it, it, it's all, it all comes back to the idea of, of placing it in the right context. And the idea that this is, and I think this is what you're trying to do too, John, is this is first transaction. This is first window transactional dollars. So we're talking about in this first window, if you're playing, if it's a multi-platform film and it's available in, in both theatrically, on demand, whatever it might be, the idea being that this is all happening in the first window. It all needs to be sort of treated um, as first window transactions, whatever that might be. So enough. Okay. <laughs> and I, I will add, John, I think uh, Melanie's company, Gravitas, is, is joining you because fairly soon uh, you're going to publish some figures on one of your recent releases, correct? Yes. 
Yeah. We actually, um, about a year and a half ago at South By, we did a huge analysis on a film that we did, a documentary called American the Bill Hicks Story. Great movie. And we had not only published the numbers, but we published the P&A spend, the producers of the film published the budget of the movie. I mean, it's actually a 25 page document that anyone in this room could download. We shared everything. Um, and you know, we definitely believe that as much transparency as possible is something that we want to do. It's just a lot of times it's collecting all of that data because not everyone has the amazing dashboard that Vimeo does. 